In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a horizontal and vertical crosshair line that is based on our mouse. As you can see here, if we move around here and if I go outside of the chart area, look what happened, it will disappear immediately. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's start to look how we can create the horizontal and vertical crosshair lines in Chart.js. And we won't be using here the crosshair plugin, which is wonderful, but it has some hiccups. So we're going to create our own crosshair lines. So the first thing that we're going to do is we go to chartjs3.com, getting started, this specific link here, which you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on the site, scroll down here and just copy this entire chunk of code here. Once you copy this, and if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here that explains it all. I'm going to paste it all in there, then cut out this, put that in here, save, and refresh. There we are. And just a quick note, Charges has updated to version 3.8. So we have this here, and I think making this a line chart is far more appropriate. And as well, I'm going to expand the size of it to 1000 pixels. And then down here, just make this a line chart, save, refresh. So now we have this here. And what I want to do is I want to create a cross here. The moment I mouse over, over on the canvas itself, and as our mouse moves, the lines will be drawn. To do this, we need to disable an item, which is the tooltip. And the reason for this is the tooltip here refreshes the page. And what happens then, you will lose the crosshair lines. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, I'm going to disable the tooltip in the plugins. You're going to say your tooltip. And then we're going to say here, enabled equals, make sure you spell it correctly, false put a comma here, and then once I did that, we're not done yet. And the reason why is because we have still this triggering effect here. So what I need to do here is put in the specific item, which is the hit radius. We put it on zero. I'm going to say the point hit radius. We set this on zero. And finally, we have the hoover. Or I guess those are the two, am I not mistaken? That is, oh, and the point radius, that's the one the point radius, we set this as well on zero. So the reason we're doing this is because we want to block the triggering effect. Basically, if we are on here, the triggering effect triggers it. And you can see here, we still have this. So I guess I'm forgetting a specific item. Maybe it's not the hit radius. It's the point hit radius and the, um, I think it's the point uh, hoover radius. That's the one. I'm going to set on zero as well. We want to disable all of those, refresh, there we are. So now if we hover, nothing will be triggered here. So now what we can do is we can create here a new item. So I will not make a plugin because the plugin will have a lot of animations in there, or at least the plugin, if we do here plugin. So what we need to do here is differently, we're going to make a different structure here. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say here, my chart. I'm going to create a function, but I want to make it add event listener first. So I say my chart dot canvas dot add event listener. And then what is our listener here? Well, basically we want to trigger a function if we have mouse move. We don't do mouse over, we will do mouse move. Why? Mouse over will indicate if we are hovering on top of the canvas. That would mean anywhere on the canvas, it's always yes. But what I, what I want to have is the X and Y coordinates, which is the mouse move. So that's why we have the mouse move here. And then we're going to say mouse move, comma, there's here the event. We want to register that event. Make this a callback functionality here with a arrow function, exp arrow expression function. And then what I want to do here is, let's say here, create the cross here function. And it will have two parameters or arguments in this case, sorry. That's the arguments, the my chart, which is reference to this immediately. And we have the E, which is basically the mouse move event that's being registered. So once we did this, let's put in here some additional enter so we have more space. That's a bit more comfortable. And then what I want to do here now is say function. And we can say here crosshair. And here I'm going to use, we have these parameters here, or sorry, arguments. These are the arguments. So we're going to give these arguments a parameter name, which is the chart. It's a very general term. And next we have the E, I'll call this the mouse move. 
So once we have this, if I do now console log, and we do mouse move, save, refresh, open up developer tab, and we move around here, look at that, we get all this information here. And all we need is basically the offset X and Y, which will indicate our item here. So that's absolutely phenomenal and very easy to use. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say here, uh, let's make a constant. I'm going to say here, mouse move dot offset x equals, oh sorry, it's not like that. I say x will be equal to this. And I'm going to say another one, constant y will be equal to the mouse move y. Very straightforward. Basically calculates the exact position relative to the canvas itself. So then we have this here. Now we can start to basically work on drawing or drawing the item. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a constant and I say equal, or sorry, we're going to do this, which is an object destructuring. If you want to understand what an object destructuring is, make sure you check in my description box. You can see there the video understanding object destructuring for chart.js. So then here, what I want is, I'm going to say with the chart, which consists of many objects, we're going to put in the first one is CTX because the CTX allows us to draw on the canvas. The next one would be the chart area because I want to have the positioning of it. And more specifically later on for the width or the height of the lines. So the chart area will have here top, bottom, left, right, width and height. We will not use all of them. And next, if you don't understand what I'm doing here and you want to understand what chart area is, I have a video as well in the description box Understanding chart area in chart.js. Yes. Very, very useful to know. So now we have this here, and I think that will be more than sufficient. Now we can start to draw our item. So what I'm going to do here is first of all, say ctx.save to save all the variables above. Let's put that like that. Then from here on, we can start to work more on it. And what I want to do here is I'm going to say here ctx.stroke style to give the lines a proper color. In this case, I'm going to use the official colors from ch from uh, chart.js, yes, which is RGBA, and you can say 102, 102, 102, which is the light grayish color, but you could do anything you want. We can try this, see if this is maybe, maybe I'll make it solid so it's easier to spot. Next, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say ctx.line width, and in this case, I make the width two pixels. So I say number two. So once I did that, what I want to do now is I want to start to draw the line. So I'm going to say here ctx.begin path. And what this truly does is we will say here now to the canvas, we're going to draw a shape or a line or something. But I want to disconnect it from anything else. So this is a unique shape. It's on its own. So that's the first command. So the next thing I want to do here now is say ctx.move to. And the move to here, what this really does is basically x and y coordinates, which would be the starting point. Well, let me explain. So if we're going to create a horizontal line, we have here the mouse cursor. If I'm here, I want to start from this point all the way to there. So the move to will understand this is the starting point, but the move to doesn't mean it will draw. No, this is the, just the starting point as well. Or, or no, sorry, not even here. It is here, this, this point will be the starting point because from here to there. So that's what we have here, the X and Y. Of course, because we have here the X and Y coordinates of this, I need to give this a proper name. So what I'm going to say here, this will be based on this level because we're going to work on the, uh, uh, no, not even on this here because this will be the amount of left and right. So I need to get this one here for the Y value. So that will be the first one. And then so the X, I will just leave it blank, but the Y will be this because the Y indicates basically up and down vertical level movement. So if I'm here, so I need to know eventually there and this point here is left basically, and then the height of it. So we have that one, that's this one here, and this will be left. So once we've got this, I can do another one, a CTX dot, and then we're going to say here, line two. So this is the preparation of drawing the line. And what I want to prepare, if we have our starting point here, the preparation would be going to there, which is from left all the way to the right side here. Well, this is just a straight line, meaning this will say here right, and this here maintains the same value as well. So once we did this, we have prepared the line, and now I'm going to say a CTX dot stroke to draw the line. 
a white stroke while canvas is like a painting it's basically the theme of painting and stroke is if you use a paintbrush you make a line with a paintbrush we call it a paintbrush stroke so they're using the same terms here for the canvas and once we have this i'm going to say ctx dot close path to make sure that it closes it and it is not connected to anything remember normally this is not really necessary but just make sure you have that or at least this stroke will be drawn first and then afterwards this and the reason why is or else you can create a shape that you don't want in this case just a straight line so it doesn't matter but if you would have a different shape that might impact it. anyway the stroke here says draw this and then we close it just to make sure it doesn't connect with anything else so if i do this now and if i move here look at that but of course it keeps on drawing here so we have some issues here so we're going to work on that so how do we solve this and this is the reason why i put it independently because we need to update this what i'm going to do here is i'm going to grab this chart i'm going to say dot update but this update has a special command and here we're going to indicate quotation mark none meaning we're going to update it and then it will refresh but it will not be visible that we see a refresh so basically it refreshes instantly without any animation so save this refresh now you can see here look at that beautiful so now what i want to do is to do the other line now you can just do the other line here i'm going to copy this just put it here and put it down enter enter there we are and then all we have to here is just change these basically so okay so we can do here i'm going to put in this say x you can put in here x and then this we will start at the very top going to the very bottom so save that refresh and there we are so because we remove the tooltip you will see that it will not hide the line the reason why we remove the tooltip and these point hit point radius is because if we hover over this something triggers and it will update as well and that counteracts with our line so if you're wondering what i'm talking about well let me show you save this refresh and then there we are see if we can find it. oh of course we cannot find it because we have no point radius let's make this 10 so it's easy to spot there we are so now you can see here and there we get these events here that is undesirable because basically what happened it's triggering a event here or it triggers something to update it so that's why we need to deactivate those and remove this tooltip here as well save refresh there we are so if you enjoyed this video i have other videos which are absolutely phenomenal as well oh and before i even continue on i see here we have still one item to solve which is this part here so we are going here outside the chart area let's fix this first before we even uh before we close off or finish off so what i'm going to do here is because what we have here is one issue if you're moving outside of this area and look what happens it just triggers as well so i don't want that so what i'm going to do here is create an if statement and this if statement will measure are we within the chart area which is basically the chart area of the canvas where it draws the chart so we're going to say here if and then we're going to grab here the uh we can get this one here but we're going to do this on the mouse of uh, offset x because we're going to first work with that one and we're going to say if this is larger or equal to uh, not to top to left and if this the x value of course is smaller or equal to the right side in that case we want to do this what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put that all in there and later on i'm going i'm going to show you this so it will work so now if i go to the left here you see here it doesn't work and you might wonder if i if it refreshes here why it doesn't load immediately why because the animation is intact here or it's working here for the first two seconds after that the update stops of the animation and then it starts to activate so if we do this here we can see here up and down we still need to do so basically we can copy all of this say here another and and all we do here is we're going to say here this is top and this is y i'm going to say here another y but then here based on the bottom save refresh and now if i move this there we are go down there doesn't work anymore or it will be only triggered when we are within the item here 
So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to do far more items because there's so much more what we can do here, I'm going to recommend you a specific item here or a series that I created, which is called the Chart.js or the Coin Market Cap Chart in Chart.js, where it is a very extensive and advanced item, but it covers a lot of things, including the crosshair, including interpolations, uh, adjustments of zooming in, zooming out, and uh, panning to the left and right which is a very interesting item. I highly recommend you to explore this video series as well.